Good morning, folks. Plasma filaments at the limb. One bright active region incoming on the south. Three weather events, nine science stories to hit, and we're off, starting at spaceweathernews.com, where with NASA's SDO program in full swing this morning, she does look pretty. Coming to 193 angstroms, we find the southern coronal hole beginning its departure. Its solar wind would impact in the coming 36 hours if it is indeed reaching to high enough heliocentric longitudes. The sunspot grouping is very, very tiny, much smaller than the brightness and ferocity of those umbral magnetic fields might suggest. Thus far, the active region has been more inactive than otherwise, had a couple of tiny B-class flare hits from the grouping, but that is all. The solar wind has tremendously leveled out, telemetry is very stable, and stable in calm range, so we are into the green on the KP index. Geomagnetism is quiet. Scenes out of Kenya here, strong windstorm carried sand and dust with it to completely change the afternoon scene here in Nairobi. Up next, we're going to the polar vortex. There was nothing to see back on September 1st, middle of the month. You'll recall we caught the first sign of coherent rotation, and it has now fully shaped up here at the start of October. It won't gain full strength for about another month, maybe more. As we speak, it is pouring in Korea. What remains of the typhoon is taking on much of the country today, followed by a bounce eastward and its next trick a re-intensification and its fourth landfall. It was Taiwan, China, Korea today, and then it will be Japan. Let's go to the Antarctic next and find the largest iceberg to break off the Amory Shelf in 50 years. It's the size of Greater London. This before and after was only about a week, September 20th to the 27th. Up next, in a story that will have many Indonesian residents frustrated, they say that Krakatoa gave clear warnings before its eruption last year that caused a tsunami and killed many people. Paper published in Nature Communications, and it will be of little consolation that maybe they'll forecast the next one. We're going out to Mars next, where things are sounding interesting to the InSight lander. Wind, its own movement, Mars quakes all picked up on its super sensitive sensors, and you can listen to some of the quakes at the link provided below. Up next, in the wake of our climate forcing movie, there has been a considerable requesting of the TSI dataset. Among the list of links today is the source page from Colorado. It has the TSI data on it, which will be critical as we enter another sunspot cycle and the flaws of TSI are revealed with the solar flares. Our climate forcing movie is listed below as well, and since the next sunspot cycle is on its way, it's time to get acquainted with space weather. Click our name here within YouTube to go to our channel page. From there, scroll down a bit until you see the line of orange hemispheres. That is the sun series. It can get you caught up and in full understanding of space weather in less than two hours. Let's do some cosmology, shall we? Oh boy, a very out there idea suggesting that perhaps vacuum dark energy of the cosmos is canceling out at small scales, such that we don't recognize it at big ones. The interesting thing is the canceling they describe is in terms of positive and negative electrical charge. The author admits the theory needs a good bit of tweaking, especially since it currently requires that the space-time energy has no concept of time or incentive to follow its rules. Best of luck to you. Up next. We're reading 21 centimeter radio wavelengths back to the earliest visible times of the cosmos. We have heard people suggest that the 21 centimeter line could constrain dark matter. It could signal millicharged dark matter. But today we get the possibility that all those dark matter models could be struck down entirely by the 21 centimeter line field. Well, one hopes. Let's go to some galactic physics next. More accurately, their active nuclei. Yesterday we heard Yale suggest star formation was key to their nature and not the overall mass of the host galaxy. Today that appears to be confirmed by a team spanning Harvard, MIT, Berkeley, Columbia, and international universities. If you will recall, this is important because we know star forming regions are more dominated by magnetic fields and plasma turbulence than they are chaos and gravity. This has strong implications for the galaxy as a whole, especially the central nucleus, if the star formation dynamics are determinative of the character of the interior. Last but not least, this is normally the sort of news we'd save for the weekly podcast, but wanted to throw in here this morning. The GMO mosquito plant in South America failed cataclysmically. It didn't just not work to kill the native mosquitoes, but those allegedly non-reproducing mosquitoes they sent into the wild, well... Life found a way is prophesized by Goldblum in the park Jurassic. They are also intermixing genes and creating hybrid mosquitoes, which are breeding like mad. 
they have unleashed tiny monsters. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.